Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to be repairing this higher or hayer, however you pronounce it. 0.7 cubic feet thermoelectric wine cooler. I'm going to be using this as a mini fridge. I made a previous video about this thing. This going over what was wrong with it. And feel free to watch that video to get an idea of what's going on with this thing if you haven't done so yet. Anyways, what's going on is it's not cooling with the fans and stuff run. This fridge has a um, digital display up front that also acts as a thermostat, but I believe the problem is in the power supply board. So first thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking out this power supply board to get it out of the way. And after that I'm going to be pulling, I'm going to be checking to make sure the thermoelectric core itself works. And if it does, I'll go ahead and take the heat sinks off and put them to press their own compound. And if it doesn't work, I'll be taking the heat sinks off and replacing the thermoelectric module and then putting some th fresh thermal paste on the heat sinks. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this power supply out of the way. So basically this unit, this fridge, takes in 110 volts from the wall and has a switch mode power supply that's responsible for converting the electricity to 12 volt DC and 5 volt DC. The digital split up front runs on 5 volt DC. And of course this power supply has been sitting for several days without being plugged in. So the capacitor should have, have had plenty of time to discharge. So let's go ahead and take it loose. Okay, here's a look at the power supply board. It's kind of like a um, switch mode power supply inside of a computer. If you don't think of it that way. That's what the bottom side looks like. See the capacitors, the main capacitors are rated for 120 microfarad to 200 volts a piece. And the thermoelectric cooler plugged in right well it's actually soldered in right here so I'm just going to go ahead and snip the wires now I can move this somewhere else to get out of the way in order to test this thermoelectric module I'm going to strip these wires. I'm going to wire this up to a regular power supply. And by doing that, it's going to send power to the Pelter device. One side will get hot and the other side will get cold. So basically, I'll fill this outside heat sink, see if it gets hot or not. Now tell me whether the thing's going to work. And if it does work, I'll continue with taking the heat sink off and like just like I was saying earlier and putting some fresh paste on the heat sinks and that can actually make a good difference in performance I did that to my other fridge when I first got it I put Arctic Silver 5 in there and made sure everything was getting a good connection alrighty so I, um, I used my multimeter to test for resistance in this thermoelectric cooler and there is resistance so that means there is a connection but when I plugged up to the power supply the hot side heat sink did not get hot it didn't even get warm so there's a number of things that can be going on here 
It could be just a bad module or there is not a thermal connection between the device and the heat sinks. And that's not very good. But if this module is burned up, I do have extras. So let's go ahead and take this fan shroud off. And I'll point something out right quick. I noticed that when they manufactured this thing, they kind of took the cheap way out in terms of screw selection. It also seems like this shroud was not designed for this exact heat sink, though it does fit up pretty good. With the screws thing, they only used two out of four screws. There's two holes left where they could put screws in, they just chose not to put screws in there. Let me show you. One being right here, if you can see. That's one, and the other is located down here in this area. So it's going to take out the two screws that hold this fan on. Get out of the way. This is a 92 millimeter fan. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to install a thermally controlled high CFM cable fan. More or less a fan that ramps up really fast if needed. It sounds like a leaf blower. Under extremely hot conditions. This way the thermal electric module can stay cool. And it seems like with these Pelter modules, the cooler you get the hot side, the better they perform in cooling the fridge. Pretty good bit of dust here, too. Have a look at that. Lots and lots of dust. Isn't that just wonderful? Let's go ahead and get that cleaned up a little bit. Then we'll have a look at the fan. Apparently this thing uses either two or four screws on the heat sink. I'll find out here in just a moment. Here's our fan. Of course, your chip, typical cheap off-brand um, DC brushless fan. It's like Dong Guan Zing, how you pronounce it, electronics company. Sleeve bearing goodness. So, of course, you'd be running this for about a few months and then the bearings would start to seize up and then your Peltier module would overheat. It's got to love it. Now let's see if we can get this thing loose. It's kind of funny enough that screw wasn't very tight on there. I began to think the way this works is um, they have two screws that hold the entire module on and the hot side is held on by two other screws and I, though I'm not 100% sure just yet. I'll find out in just a minute. Another thing I could also think would be a problem with this thing could be one of the thermal sensors if equipped. Some Peltier modules have um, a set of temperature controlled switches. My other fridge has two. I believe one's for too cold and the other is for too hot because the fridge can do both heat and cold on the inside. Just as I figured. The whole module comes out like this. This is our hot side. This is our cold side. And right there is the cold side fan.
which spins freely just fine. Now, let's go ahead and get this popped loose. And they got the screws or whatever covered up with glue. I gotta get that off first. Okay, here are the screws after I pulled the glue off of them. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this hot side cooler and take this Pelter module apart to get to the Pelter device. I'm curious to know what they use for thermal transfer material on this too. They seem to have cheaped out on everything else. Let's see what else they have cheaped out on. Set these two screws to the side. And let's take this apart. Wow, they actually did use thermal paste on this. Awesome. They got tons of little gaskets in here. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this up to a smaller power source and see if one side gets hot and the other side gets cold. Okay, after trying to plug this up and test it, um, turns out it's bad. Plugged up to a um, small little battery, 1.5 volts, and I felt no change at all in temperatures on either side. Normally when you plug one of these up to like, let's see, like a little alkaline battery or something, they don't, this thing here doesn't get so hot to where it has to be a heat sink, but you can feel one side get a little warm and the other side get cool. I didn't feel that. So the thermal electric module is bad. The power supply and stuff was probably still good, but I'm still going to rig this up manually. Anyway, that's a close shot of the module, what it looks like. It's even got a date code on here. Appears to be um, either the seventh month of 2008, so July 2008, or the seventh week of 2008, so February 2008. Either way, the model on this bad boy is TEC1-127 Here's another thermal electric module I had laying around that was gunned out of a small little portable cooler some time back. And it's funny to note, have a look at this. They both say TEC1-12706 on them. Ain't that funny. This one here does work, I tried it. Now I'll give you an example of how to test one of these. The best way to test a thermal electric cooler without burning it up, without a heat sink, is test it at a low voltage. These only run at 12 volts. So let's say a single cell battery, such as this alkaline. All I gotta do is touch the negative side and then the positive side, like this. And hold it with your finger. And the side with the marking on it is getting cool to the touch. And the opposite side is getting pretty warm to the touch. So that confirms that this core does work. Okay, I just reinstalled the cooling module and I installed a power supply. 
I took this old enhanced 200 watt power supply and did some modifications to the wiring, got rid of some excessive non needed wires such as 3.3 volt lines and the 5 volt lines and I left the 5 volt standby and 12 volt lines available and I got everything wired up like this got a power switch out here this thing's been running for about I don't know half an hour or so the internal temperature was eight was 82 degrees when I first started this thing and now it reads 58 so it's gonna take a little while but it's slow but surely cooling it down and you can, you can feel the front of this door and it feels quite cool to the touch okay so here's an update on that mini fridge that I worked on I got everything installed to it and let me go and show you what everything looks like So I got a power supply installed, got a 120 millimeter fan installed since it was a lot quieter and moved, actually moved more air across the heat sink. I got this power supply wired up for, let's see, 12 volts going to the Peltier device. Got everything on separate wires. I got three 12 volt wires going to the Peltier leads. Then I got a single 12 volt wire going to um, a single fan. There's two fans in this refrigerator. So I got two 12 volt lines going to each um, to all the fans got the 5 volt standby line going to the little display up front and I got this switch here wired up to turn the unit on and off and I got another switch over here to turn the evaporator fan on and off and you can probably guess the reason why it's in here is just pretty obvious it did work okay but it didn't get cold as a regular refrigerator would get the coldest this thing would get was probably 55 degrees which is not very cold if you want cold drinks anyway and believe me what I'd had to do to it is put a very strong thermal electric cooler or pelter device in in this thing to make it work like it's supposed to it seems like pelter devices don't work too well with evaporator fan designs rather they work better in solid state applications so because of that, I put my other fridge back in service. I got everything organized a little bit better to free up a little bit more space in here. Anyways, let me go and show you what the inside of this fridge here looks like. So basically, inside this fridge here is more or less solid state. Between the thermal electric cooler and the back of this fridge are a square piece of metal that makes the thermal connection. And the way this works, the whole inside of this fridge is metal, and the metal conducts the coldness of the cold side of the thermoelectric cooler to cool the inside of the fridge and this works a whole lot better than the other design so I'm going to just continue using this fridge here because it works very well anyways any questions or comments feel free to ask